we have hydro wires today. Well, this will be an interesting picture to do. That picture is showing up on your screen. So welcome to any of you that are new and welcome to all of those that continue to, to return for the art class. Thank you for blessing me with your presence. I'm so honored that you're here. We will do a couple of, you know, well, three deep breaths just to get us into art mode for the beginning of the class. Uh, but we have another minute before we can do that or have to do that. So if you're ready with paper towel would be handy. Two water dishes. I keep one clear for fresh water and one for rinsing brushes. So I have three brushes. I'm using number 12, which is a very big brush. It holds a lot of water. I call it a mop brush. It hold, just holds a lot of water. And sometimes I like it to hold a lot of paint. I've also got a number two pointed brush and a number three pointed brush. We have some fine lines for the wires for the hydro poles. So if you like, you can use a fine liner. And if you're comfortable, you can use your brush with black paint. I'm not sure which I'll use today, probably my brush, because I just like to do that. We are just past the hour, so let's take three deep breaths in and just hold it at the top of your breath, just for a moment, and then release. And we'll do that three times. And that period of time where you hold your breath is uh, almost like a meditation. It's very healthy for us to be in that, just in the current present moment, just by holding your breath for those few seconds. So if you do find you need to have a bit of a break or something that's going on in your day, just stop and take a few deep breaths and hold it at the top, come into the present moment, and it will, it will help in most cases just settle down whatever's happening for the time being. So let's just take anything that's an issue or a problem, um, that's something that's, that's eating at you or just nagging at you, just set it aside in the parking lot for now and give yourself this one hour gift of time. Again, I thank you, I'm blessed, I'm blessed by all of you being with me today. And so with that, we'll start, we'll just take some deep breaths in. So first deep breath in and hold it for a second or two and release and drop those shoulders down. Just open up your chest area. Just give yourself that fresh air. Another deep breath in and hold it for a second and release. And another deep breath in and hold it and release. Okay, so we have our picture. This is the picture that you were, the sketch that you were given. So we're going to paint the whole background. So I'm going to use my large brush, my number 12 that I call a mop brush. And I'm just using clear water. So this is the picture we're going to do. So let's go ahead with just clear water and we're going to wet this whole canvas. We're just going to get the whole thing wet just with clear water. We're going over everything. We're going over the, the telephone lines. We're going right down to the very bottom of the canvas, right over the birds, right over those little branches you see coming out the side. So I'll just have a look at your canvas and see if there are any dry spots. And you can go from side to side. You can go from top to bottom whichever way works to get that water on. And then if you need to, you can just use a paper towel and just dry off those outer edges if you've got extra water you don't need. So we don't need puddles and puddles of water. 
but we do want a nice flow of colors and a nice blending. So the colors we're using for this picture for the background are ochre and blue, and I've got ultramarine blue and red. I'm using a cadmium red. So I'll start with the blue. Again, that's ultramarine blue. And I want that blue, I just want it to flow. So you can put it on darker if you like, or lighter. As long as your canvas is wet and that color is flowing, then you're good. If you need to add more water to make it flowing, then go ahead and do that. And we're taking that color right down to the bottom. So we want that sky to show right down to the bottom. So the faster you do this, the better your results will be. So that's ultramarine blue. Now I've got a cadmium red. And I'm going to pop that cadmium red in the sky just from one corner, just sort of going down like a, that the clouds would move. Because it's going on to the blue, it will turn a little bit purple in spots, which will be quite pretty. And again, not to worry too much about getting it on perfect. It's just a matter of getting that color in the sky. And then I'm going to go on with ochre. So I'm not wasting any time. I'm going right on with the ochre. Popping that color in there, not too worried about perfection. I'm running that color down on both sides. Just a nice yellow. If it turns a little bit of, because it's going on the blue, that's okay. And that canvas is still pretty wet, so I'm able to move it around a little bit. And you can see it's blending as it's hitting the canvas. So for those just coming on, what we've done is wet our, can our, our canvas completely with clear water. We've added ultramarine blue, that's this ult ultramarine blue and put this on the whole canvas. Now I'm adding a little bit extra darker color on top of what I've already put on. Once we put that blue on, then we put on red. I used a cadmium red. Then we put on ochre. And not to worry too much about your placement or your colors being perfect. We can even, if you like, just for a little bit of, of sky, looking of movement of clouds, you can take your brush and you can run it back and forth and just give a nice uh, cloud formation look. So that's just by moving my brush from side to side. If I want to, I can move some of that. The canvas is still wet. I'm just looking for a pretty background sky. So if anything's darker or lighter than you like, then just use your brush. If your canvas is still wet, using a damp brush, you can just move those colors around. You can lighten or darken them, blend them a little bit. So this is just our backdrop. Now, in order to go ahead from this point, we'll need a blow dryer and you'll want to dry your sky completely. So I'm going to mute and blow dry not to go too close to your canvas. You don't want to be moving the paint with the blow dryer. So hold it, hold your blow dryer just back a little bit. When your canvas is dry by putting the back of your hand, and I'm saying the back of your hand, because it doesn't have the same oils that your palms have. 
So using the back of your hand, you can tell if it's cold, it's still wet. So blow dry until it doesn't feel cold to touch. So my, my paper feels warm to touch. It's not wet anymore. If it feels cold, then just go ahead and take another minute or so and, and continue to dry. You can, if it's warm or, or new, if, if it's really cold, then it will still be wet. If it's warm, it's, it's good. So we won't go ahead and we won't do those pools just yet. I'd like to give them a little bit of extra time just in case that paper isn't completely dry. So I'm going into burnt umber. And I'm going to use burnt umber where I've drawn these little branches at the side. And I'm just using my number three pointed brush, number three, with burnt umber. And I'm just marking those little branches where they are. I'm just painting this, this the branches. Once I have those branches painted, and there you see some of them don't even touch each other. Your eye will naturally fill in the gap. So they don't always have to be attached. Now I'm mixing a combination of ultramarine blue, the same color I put in the sky, and ochre, but more ochre. So I'm looking for an olivey color. So it may look dark on the screen, but it's actually more ochre. And I'm just doing dabs of paint with this ochre and ultramarine just on top of some of those branches. I want some of them to still show through, but I'm just making the look of leaves. You can see I'm just using my brush and just tapping it on. I'm not painting specific leaves. I'm just doing the look of a leaf, just with that brush sideways. And I'm leaving lots of sky showing through, room for the birds to fly. But I also want the look of the sun in the sky to sit on the outer edge of the branches just using ochre. So I'm not using that mixture anymore. I'm just using ochre to brighten up the outside edges of my leaves. This is where the sun is hitting that tree. Just on the tips. I just put ochre, just plain ochre on the tips of the branches of the trees, just to show where the sunlight is hitting on the outside of that tree. So it's not all the way through, it's only on the outer tip. And leave lots of white or cloud showing or, or a sky showing through for the birds. Visually, it will be a nice effect. And that mixture that you've made of ultramarine blue and ochre, more ochre, so that gives that olivey color, that mixture that you made. If you've made an extra puddle of it, we will use it down below. Okay, so with straight black, we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint those telephone or hydro poles. So I'm starting at the top. Just coming down that pole.
So we've drawn the lines. So just try to stay within those lines if you're able to. Remember that hydro poles and telephone poles are made out of a piece of wood. So if it's not perfectly straight, that's okay. Because if you look when you're out driving or moving around, you'll see that they are not always perfectly straight either. Some are on a lean. I just, I drew mine with a ruler. Maybe you drew yours freehand. This is just straight black. And we'll do the pull next to that one. And it's shorter. Because visually, it is farther away. So if it's easier for you to do it in short feathery strokes, one piece at a time, then that's the way you, you can do that. If you're fine to do a straight line down, then go ahead. So there's my second pole. You see it's not completely straight and I'm okay with that. It is a hydro pole. And I'm going ahead with my third pole, which again is shorter because it's farther away. This is what gives us that distance and it's not as wide. And there's actually five poles in this picture. So I'm doing the fourth pole. And I've got a little tiny pole at the side. Again, if you are comfortable uh, with a brush, fine. If you want to use a permanent, or not permanent, but a fine line marker, then go ahead and do that. And for any of the any of you that are new on today, if you want to get the, the information um, before the class for Tuesday and Thursday, if you send me an email to wildc188 at gmail.com, that's wildc188 at gmail.com, then I can put you on the email list. And on the weekend, you will receive notification of the class, the, a sketch in some cases. And if there's any extra material that you will need, like a blow dryer, or sometimes we've actually used a toothbrush, we've used some, some plastic wrap, which I do believe we're going to do um, a stained glass next Thursday. So plastic wrap, if you've got some handy, um, that would be perfect if you wanna dig that out. So now I'm gonna go ahead with those poles and I'm going to do the cross beam. I'm just going across from side to side, just filling in that drawn line that I put on there. And we're going to go ahead and do that on all the other poles. So they're moving, they're getting smaller and smaller as we move along. And they also have cross beams for support. So they all have these support beams.
And for those that are still working on that, we'll allow you a few moments just to catch up. We are at halftime, believe it or not. So today we are reading a card about inspiration. So almost everything will work again. If you unplug it for a few minutes, including you. That's interesting. Take some time to unplug today. Turn off your phone, shut down your computer and reflect on your energy level. How do you feel? Do you need to prior, prior, prioritize yourself more today? Almost everything will work again if you unplug it for a few minutes, including you. That is by Anne Lamott. So take some time to unplug today, turn off your phone, shut down your computer, and reflect on your energy level. How do you feel? Do you need to prioritize yourself more today? Interesting idea, but not to unplug just yet. Wait till the end of the class. Hopefully that's given some of you some ideas for re-energizing yourself. Some people like to plug in for energy and some people like to unplug. So it depends, depends on what your personality needs. Now here's the way we're going to do these wires. And if you're comfortable using a fine liner, some kind of marker, go ahead and do that. I'm switching from a number three pointed brush to a number two. I'm using black paint. And in order for my paint, to be light enough to use so that I don't have a big glob of paint on my brush and then get frustrated. I'll just demonstrate what I do. So, sorry, I have tape stuck to my backer board. Oops. So I'm taking black paint on my brush and I'm twisting my brush so that I only have paint on the tip of my brush and then I'm practicing before I hit the canvas. So I can get a little bit on the tip, I can twist it a little bit and then practice. And in order to do these wires, we don't need to do the whole wire all in one shot. So these are very fine lines. I'm trying to make as fine a line as I possibly can. So if I just take a glob of black paint and try and do a fine line, I'm not gonna get a very fine line. I want to twist and only have that paint on the tip. So I'm just using the tip of my brush very lightly, almost not touching the canvas. So I'm starting with the smallest wire over to the far side. And coming in to the pole. Again, I'm going to get some fresh paint on my brush. I'm twisting my brush just to take off excess paint. And then I'm doing that next line. Now, if at the end, I have, I miss my pencil line, when my painting is dry, I will be able to erase those pencil lines. So I'm just starting with the outside of the pole, going to the outside of the pole, going to the outside of the pole, from the outer line to the outside, from the outer line to the outside, And from the outer line, you can't even see it at that part of the pole, but to the outside. So all I have are the outside lines on my hydro wires. And this is where you need to take a deep breath and drop those shoulders. Don't hold your breath. Your paints will operate better if you are more relaxed. Just give your shoulders a little shrug if you need to. This is just a piece of paper. 
This is an art class not meant for perfection. We're just trying new things. We're looking at distance and how we can get that effect looking from close up to far away. And then I'm going to come to my center. Try not to hit the black that I've already painted. So I'm going on to the line that I've already drawn. So I'm doing the center only. I'm not worried about the, the inside. I'm not doing this inside yet. I'm just doing from the top to the center. And then that one meets the center for the top of the pole. If it's not perfect, it's okay. Then going from the top to the center of the next pole. And carrying on from there. And again, just take a deep breath. Just get some black paint. Twist your brush a little bit just to get that paint on the tip of it. And I'm going to the center, coming down. So I'm on the outside edge, the inside edge of my wires. So for each pole, we should have a wire from the outside, from the center, and from the inside. Now it gets tricky with your eyes. So sometimes it's difficult to figure out which wire goes where, but that's what you're looking for is three sets of wires for each pole. And then they also have a little conductor on the top where the wire meets the pole. There's a little conductor. So it's just a little mark, a little black mark when we're painting it. We're just looking for just a little marking This is what holds the wire in place, and this is what gives it the energy or allows the energy to move through. And in order to give those wires some time to dry, I'm going to go back to my number three brush. So I'm moving up a, up a notch again from the two. And I'm going to use that ultramarine mix with the, with the ochre, that olive color. And I'm going to add some greenery, some growth. These are hydro wires in a field. So I'm putting some paint at the bottom, all around, even on top of those hydro poles. So there's some growth there, which if you saw a, a row of hydro poles in a field, you would probably see something similar to this. So this is just that ochre and ultramarine blue mix that's an olivey color. Now I'm going to also use the ochre sp uh, sporadically throughout that bottom as a field would have different colors. 
And I've got the brown, the burnt umber that I used on my tree branches. And I'm going to put a little bit of that wherever I've got sky at the bottom. I want to cover the sky at the very bottom. And I can put that burnt umber. So if I have any blue still showing through at the bottom, I want to cover that over. So I have a finished earth look instead of sky underneath my growth. So I've just got a little bit here. So I want to cover that over. And it's okay to go right on top of those poles. And in order for it not to look quite as dry and desolate, I'm going to take some green. Now I've got hooker's green. If you've got sap green, um, any green that you've got, we're just going to add a little, we will just add a little bit of green in and around just to give a little bit of life, a little bit of freshness, and not to overdo it, just a little bit. So what's missing on this picture at this point are our birds. So we've drawn the birds on the branches. So with just black paint, I'm going to go ahead. This is a silhouette of a bird. I'm going to paint this bird sitting on the hydro wire. I like to paint in odd numbers, and I believe there's five birds there. Yes, there's a little tiny one down here just sitting at the edge of the tree. So I'm just using straight black just to paint these birds. And if they're not showing up as well as you would like, Go ahead and make them a little bit bigger. That's okay. So for some reason, my my branches and my my leaves at the side, I, I think for the picture, they're a little bit dark. So I'm using my largest brush and I've just got it wet with clear water and just tapped the excess water off. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to soften and blend these just a little bit, just to soften the look. They just look a little bit dark. So I'm just, I'm lifting off a little bit of paint just by brushing. So if yours aren't, aren't too dark and you're happy with that, then good. Uh, but mine just seemed a little bit dark. So I'm just lightening them up a little bit. And then I'll come back on and I'll reintroduce those branches. And again, if you're happy with yours, then that's fine. I just wanted to lighten mine up a little bit. So I'm going to come back on and I won't use that burnt umber this time. I think I'll use my olive green just for branches. I'm using my small brush, my pointed brush. I'm just going to put some branches through my trees. Some I'm putting beyond.
Sometimes I play and play and play and play and remove and add and remove and add. And you can certainly do that and have fun with your art. So what's left to do is decide where are we going to put our artist signature? And that's up to you. I choose to put mine right in the picture. So I'm going in the bottom right hand corner. So it's going to be part of my grass, but it's also signed. So that's our picture. That's our class for today. That's what you can do in one hour. And I think a lot of you are working very studiously. Hopefully you're not all tensed up in the shoulders. Take a deep breath and just drop those shoulders down. And remember our inspiration to unplug today if you're able to. So it looks like you did some lovely work. So thank you for joining. I'm so grateful that you're here. Bye-bye.